Welcome to Unpacked. On today's episode, we've actually got something pretty exciting from Gigabyte's Aorus lineup. Now, the Aorus X7 was released early this year and it combined dual GTX GPUs and a quad core processor in a supremely thin form factor, but it needed a 17 inch notebook to do that. So let's have a look at what they removed to create a sub 14 inch model. I guess we're about to find out. This is the Aorus X3 Plus. X3 Plus. The Plus is important because there are two models of this notebook. The Plus is a 13.9 inch, while the Non Plus Vanilla is 13.3 inch. Amazingly though, the specifications for both systems are actually identical other than the screen. More on that later. So let's do a physical tour of the device. I guess it starts with the overall build quality. The lids got their bird of prey logo, some nice little styling accents here. And other than that, a plain matte black finish. And for that matter, so does the rest of the notebook. The whole thing just has this anodized aluminum finish other than a couple little plastic bits at the back that gives it a very premium overall feel. Over on the right hand side, we've got a power button, two USB 3 ports, an SD card slot, and a ventilation spot here. On the left hand side, we've got a display port, that's actually a mini display port, HDMI, one USB 2 port, which I like to see for compatibility reasons, and then headphone and microphone jacks, and another ventilation port. Back to the back, you'll find two large vents. Each of these has a dedicated fan internally, and then what's this? An RJ45 lamp. Port. This is actually getting really rare, even on some gaming grade notebooks, especially for thin and lights, and I love to see this kind of thing included. It is a killer LAN port, so you'll be getting their gaming priority networking out of the system if you want to configure that in the software. Flipping it over onto the bottom, we find, well, a whole lot of ventilation and then a couple of speaker ports, and that is about it. Now, before we open this baby up, let's do a quick rundown of the specs of this actually surprisingly powerful gaming laptop. The processor is a Core i7-4710HQ, that's 2.5 gigahertz base and boosts up to 3.5 gigahertz. That's paired with up to 16 gigs of DDR3L, although most configs are going to be 8 gig out of the box. It's going to really depend on what exact specs you buy, but they've made it pretty flexible internally. And then for storage, it comes with dual M.2 SSD storage slots supporting up to 500 and 12 gigs each. Although I can't see any particular reason why they would need support more in the future if bigger M.2 SSDs exist. The HM87 Express chipset motherboard can be configured to enable RAID for these drives for a little bit of extra extreme performance. Of course, for wireless connectivity, you've got your usual assortment of wireless options, including 802.11 AC over the five gigahertz frequency and Bluetooth 4.0. As mentioned earlier, of course, that LAN port on the back is a killer nick. And the final spec on this one is an important one. No gaming grade laptop is complete without a discrete GPU. And the GPU in here is a GTX 870M with six gigs of GDDR5. It of course supports Optimus technology, which means that the GPU can shut down when the system isn't needing it. Of course it does right now, so it's running right now. And then it can instead rely on the integrated Intel HD 4600 graphics. So now let's talk about the screen. I alluded to there being something special about it before, and that's because what I didn't tell you was this is actually a 3200 by 1800 resolution display. Yes. That is a 3K matte finish IGZO screen with stunning contrast and minimal backlight bleed. It's also got wide, mostly wide viewing angles that might not be IPS grade, but are way better than your standard TN panel. And at this size and resolution, guys, that is a stunning 262 pixels per inch, which is higher than Apple's retina level screens on their MacBook Pro lineup. And then as a reminder, remember that six gigs of RAM on the video card? Well. That was there for a reason and now we understand it. With a screen of this resolution, that becomes much more important because if you want to put high resolution textures in your games, then you will need more RAM. 
Too many times we see people try to game in 4K with cards that might be fast enough, but might only have, you know, one and a half or two gigs of memory, which can become a bottleneck for your system. Now, earlier I mentioned that there are an X3 and an X3 Plus, and they're two different variants of the system. So this right here, as I said before, is the Plus with the 3K panel at 13.9 inches. The X3 is actually pretty much the same laptop, except that they've gone ahead and put in a 13.3 inch panel with quad HD 2560 by 1440 resolution. It packs the same EXO technology, except that the Vanilla X3 has a larger bezel to make up for the 0.9 inch deficit in screen real estate. So it's actually within the same overall form factor. One last thing about the screen, guys, it's not touchscreen despite the bundled Windows 8.1 operating system, which for people who are used to it might be a bit of an issue, but a lot of people won't care, especially for a gaming laptop where they're more likely to be using a keyboard and mouse anyway. Next to the screen is your standard 720p resolution webcam. Moving on to the keyboard, you'll find a strong white backlight that's user customizable in terms of brightness. It's got two levels and off. Maybe not as extravagant as the Razer Blade with its 13 level backlight, but that always felt a little bit over the top to me anyway. The keyboard layout is mostly standard and has five programmable G keys that can cycle between user-defined modes that you can configure with the software included. And I'd say really the only unusual thing about the keyboard is the arrow keys. I'm not, uh, I don't like this layout very much. And I wish that Gigabyte had just made a little bit more room down here to put a more standard arrow key layout. The keys have decent travel distance, but I'd say the tactile feedback is not as good as I'd like to see. The glass trackpad tracks incredibly well, but as with any glossy surface, if you've got greasy fingers, it can be a little bit sticky to use, and it gets a little bit grimy looking once you've been using it for a while. Would have preferred to see something matte finished, but I do enjoy how well it tracks. Now, internally, wish I could show you this, it's powered by a 73.26 watt hour battery that in my tests managed to do actually pretty darn well. It managed about an hour of gaming battery life, which considering how small it is, is pretty darn respectable. Although maybe a less respectable is that uh, beefy 180 watt power brick that is almost as big as the laptop. I kind of wish that they had gone with something a little bit sleeker, but I guess, you know, you got to kind of pick your battles here and you've, you've got a great laptop and it's, you know, a little bit less expensive than other super thin and light competitors and it's got upgradable memory and upgradable storage and all that. I guess, you know, you got to kind of be willing to take your lumps. So that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Unpacked on the Aorus X3 Plus. Guys, thank you for watching. Comment below and let us know what features you can't live without on a gaming laptop. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.